Cord. Let's pick up where we left off from yesterday. And before we do that, this is a foundational conversation, right? This is, I want to build a real estate business, uh, whether I'm new to real estate, been in the business for a while, uh, super successful, never sold a home. This conversation applies to me because as we know, very few real estate agents work on purpose. We talked about E to P yesterday, and E is what we do naturally. It's God-given talent and what comes to us easy. And we all have a ceiling of achievement. It might be lower than someone else's. It might be higher than someone else's, but we all have a ceiling of achievement. And in order to break through that ceiling, we have to go from being doing what's easy to being purposeful. And when we do that, we create massive energy. We have breakthroughs. Now, working on purpose. I've got three main buckets that I am focused on every day with what is work. Work is 20 conversations, 250 days a year, or 5,000 conversations a year. Now, our goal is to build our database, meaning that we are going to put everyone we know, everyone who knows us, and everyone who knows that we're a real estate agent in our database as part of our sphere of influence. We're going to communicate with that group 36 times a year in order to create emotional proximity in order to create top of mind. So when they think of real estate, they think of us. Now, the other job that we have every day is to feed that database. So build a database, feed it every day. And it's a standard in these 20 conversations that we're having 250 days a year to add one new met to our database over a 12 month period. So we're building a database, we're feeding it every day. Our other goal is to look for opportunity. In other words, in these 20 conversations that we're having, 250 days a year, yes, I know I'm being repetitive, we're looking for one person every day who is thinking of selling their home. So in a year's time, we're adding 250 people to our pipeline. And then we're gonna follow up forever systematically in order to create emotional proximity so that when these 250 people are ready to sell, they think of us. Now we're creating opportunity. And what I want to do today is I want to back down to one, to one of these conversations. In other words, we're having 20 conversations a day. And let's just say for the purpose of this conversation, it's a prospecting call. I'm circle prospecting. And Clarissa, that simply means that I'm calling everyone in the neighborhood around a property that recently sold with, hey, Clarissa, John Dietz, thank you for taking my call. The reason for my call is a home in your neighborhood recently sold. Matter of fact, it's sold for top dollar, which is great news. Our challenge now is we still have buyers that are looking for great homes like yours. Just out of curiosity, who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home? Script. Write it down, PDR it, practice drill rehearse until you've internalized the conversation so that you can make that call. Now, if Clarissa picks up the phone, that's a contact. It counts as one of my 20 contacts that day. Now, the next part of this conversation, what I'm focused on is I wanna convert Clarissa from being a contact to a lead. Now, so contact, convert. In order to convert someone from being a conversation to a lead, that simply means that we're getting their name, their phone number, their email address, and their mailing address. Now, I've converted Clarissa 
from a contact to a lead. My next focus is I'd like to pop by and take a look at your home in case I have a buyer for you. That's an appointment. Simple enough. So we go from contact to conversion to appointment. Now, if Marissa is not ready to meet with me yet, then she gets put into my database as a nurture. So the path from a contact to a closed sale is contact, convert to a lead, schedule the appointment, or nurture, follow up until they're ready. And then the follow, the final step is I've got a written agreement. And in this particular example, it's a listing agreement. So I made a call. Aaron answered the phone. Hey, Aaron, John Dietz, I noticed you're selling your home by owner. Just out of curiosity, if I had an offer for your home, would you want me to bring you the offer? Aaron says, sure. Or he says, do you have an offer? My response is, great question. I won't know until I see your home. That's exactly why we should get together. Does today at two o'clock work or would three be better for you? Aaron says, come on over at three o'clock. I've, con I've converted that contact to a lead to an appointment. Now, Aaron may say, no, I don't wanna meet with you. I'm gonna sell my home on my own. Call me back in a month. Well, then now he's over here. He's a nurturer. Or maybe I go and meet with him and he's not ready to sign an agreement yet. He goes back over here, he's a nurturer. And I'm following up until he's ready. The path to successful lead generation. So I'm looking at the clock and, I'm, and here's what I, here's what I, my aha is I'm having a conversation with myself as I'm having a conversation with you. It's one of the gifts of having ADD. <laughs> is this could be a short conversation today, depending on your involvement, because this is the message. It's it. There is nothing else. Juanita, when we met, we talked about building a foundation. This is foundational. We met yesterday and we talked about creating a blueprint. You said, show me a path. This is the path in order to be successful in real estate. Yes or yes? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you'll get used to it. I say that a lot, right, Aaron? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. How do you nurture the relationship if they say no? How, how do you nurture it? Yeah. Great question. There we go. See, now it's going to be a longer conversation. We'll get to that. I promise. All right. So the path is I'm making calls. Matter of fact, I'm making 20 of them a day because that's lead generation. That's work. What is work? Work is 20 conversations, not 19, not 18, not 17, because I have 17 conversations. I didn't have the 18th conversation, which could have been a million dollar listing that I didn't get because I didn't make the call. Thank you for repeat for finishing my sentence for me. I love that. I thought you were waiting for it. No, I love it. I love it. I did just repetition is the mother of learning. So in one of those calls, I'm making a contact. Juanita picks up the phone. It's an expired listing. Juanita, John Dietz, I noticed your listing came off the market. Just curious, are you still interested in selling your home? Absolutely. Sure. And if I had an offer on your home, would you want me to bring you that offer today? Sure. Cool. In order to bring you that offer, I need to pop by. It'll only take me 10 or 15 minutes to take a look at your home so I could potentially bring you an offer. Does today at two o'clock work or would three be better for you? Two works. Okay. So I've, got, I've converted the contact to a lead because yes, I'm getting all of her information and I've scheduled an appointment. This is so simple. Now, if the appointment is a list appointment, then we're going right here to agreement. Phone call, contact, convert to a lead, schedule an appointment, get the listing, done.
go get the next one. Sounds simple, doesn't it? It isn't. <laughs> now, if she's not ready yet, then she goes over here. She's in nurture. And now I'm going to follow up until she's ready. Now, how do I follow up? Great question. So this dotted line represents the day they get serious about selling their home. And what we know is typically this is going to happen about seven to 10 weeks before they put their home on the market. Now, you might have your initial appointment with them right here, and they're not ready yet. And you're going to call them once a week for the first four weeks. Once a week for the first four weeks. Now, these are just check-in calls. In other words, hey, Millie, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, following up as promised. Thank you for the opportunity to see your home. And I wanted to know if you had any questions for me. Now, Millie may say, nope, all is good. And if she does, it's the end of the conversation. I'm just checking in. It's like that salesperson at Nordstrom's walking over to you and saying, can I help you? And you say, I'm just looking. And they say, cool, I'll be right over here folding clothes. If you have any questions, I'm just a few steps away. And then five minutes later, they come back. Hey, Millie, John Dietz, remember me? I'm the guy over there folding clothes, just checking in, wanted to see if you had any questions. No, John, I'm good. Cool. I'll be right over here folding clothes. Real estate. Hey, Millie, John Dietz, following up his promised. Just checking in. Thank you for meeting with me. I enjoyed meeting with you. And are there any questions that I can answer for you today? Um, no. Millie says no. She's good. Perfect. Week two. Hey, Aaron, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, following up as promised. Just checking in. How is everything going? Great. Is there anything I can do for you today? No, thank you. Cool. Well, Aaron, if there is, I'm just a phone call away and I'll call you again next week. Thank you, John. Okay, week three, make a call. It's the same call you made at the second week. So don't wor worry about learning a new script. Same one. Week four, make a call. Same call you made week three that you made week two. Now you're gonna back down to once a month because otherwise you're a stalker and you don't wanna be a stalker. <laughs> so month two, make a call. By this time, hey, Laura, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, following up as promised, just checking in. How's everything going? Everything is going great. That's all you need to say. They know why you're calling. You don't need to remind them. And you're not going to close for a listing appointment until you see opportunity. Opportunity usually shows up in two forms. One, the situation's changed. Remember, people will never change their mind, but they will make a new decision based on new information. Please write that down, it's so critically important. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. In other words, no, 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 no. Situation changed, I'm glad you called. I made a new decision based on new information. The other thing I'm looking for is frustration. Frustration usually means opportunity. Now, month three, I'm making a call. It's the same call. Hey, Chris, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, following up as promised, just checking in. How are you doing? Same call, right? Now, let's say it's a for sale by owner. And Hervé, you've been trying to sell your home four months now. In other words, you probably expected it would have sold by now, right? So I want you to respond with getting kind of frustrated, my home hasn't sold. Okay, ready? So month two, month three, month 
for Hervé, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, just following up. How is everything going? Okay, John. Okay, that's so, not so well. Hmm. Hmm. There's a script. Write it down. <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. I would have expected that it would have sold by now as well. Absolutely. You know, Hervé, let me ask you a question. What does a great buyer look like? For you, what does a great buyer look like? Yeah, yeah. And, and you could tell Herve was looking for the answer, right? Listen, sellers go to script school, write that down. And they have very few scripts. Here's one of them. The answer to that question is almost always somebody who will pay my price, somebody who can afford my home. Your response when you hear that is absolutely, I agree. And can I share with you what a great buyer looks like to me? Yes, go cool. ahead. Cool. You see, Herve, a great buyer to me is someone who sold their home yesterday and they need to buy a home to move into in the next 30 days. Do you agree with that? Yes. Or maybe a great buyer is someone who is in town for the weekend to buy a home. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. And Herve, if you were that buyer, would you be out driving around looking at for sale by owners like your home? Or would you be working with a professional like me to find a home? With yeah, you would. Now, if you're the real estate agent that's working with that buyer, are you driving them around and showing them homes that are for sale by owner or properties that are listed by a professional like me? Yeah. Now, Herve, if you're not attracting one of the buyers we just described as a great buyer, who are you attracting? I guess the people coming to the house, I don't know. Maybe everybody else? You know, Herve, if I could show you how I could sell your home for more money in less time, would you be interested in seeing how I could do that? Cool. Now we're here. Schedule the appointment. Go get the listing. And remember, this is critically important. It was no, 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 go away. I'm never going to hire you. What could you do to sell my house? Because you followed up forever. That's got to be a great thing. It's the best. <laughs> it's absolutely the best. Did I answer your <laughs> Did I answer your question? Yes. Did yes. I answer your question? Good. All right, guys, give me just a second. I'm gonna hit stop recording, then I'm gonna come to you with questions and comments. <laughs>